Welcome to Master Math. Today we're going to talk about circle graphs. And you're going to discover that they're a little bit like a compass. They've got 360 degrees like a compass. And they can also help you and the people you're trying to communicate to find the correct path. Now you're going to need paper and pencil for this lesson and you're also going to need a protractor. So if you don't have a protractor, pause the lesson and see if you can find one. And then when you come to a you try it slide, hit your pause button again, try the problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to the answer. Circle graphs, pie charts, what are they used for? Well typically they're used to communicate some information about your population. What you're going to show is what percentage of the population fell into each of several categories. Now that sounds a little confusing. Let's, let's look at an example. Let's say you wanted to know what is the favorite participation sport of 13 year olds in Pamela City, Arkansas? Well how would we find that out? I guess we could ask them. We could create a survey and go to the 13 year olds in Panama City, Arkansas and say what's your favorite participation sport? Our population, the group that we want to understand about, is 13 year olds in Pamela City, Arkansas. So we could ask them all, but wait, there's thousands and thousands of 13 year olds in Pamela City, Arkansas, so we couldn't ask them all. Maybe we could just ask some of them. Maybe we could find a sample of them, just a few of them, and hope that their responses were characteristic of all 13-year-olds in Panama, Pamela City, Arkansas. So we'll ask a sample of the population of 13-year-olds in Pamela, in Pamela City, Arkansas, what their favorite participation sport was. But how do we pick that sample? I mean, if we pick the wrong sample, it may not be indicative of what all 13-year-olds in Pamela City, Arkansas think. For instance, if we were to ask six people that we surveyed at the Panama City Mall, do you think that would be a good sample? Do you think six people at the mall would be a, a good cross-section of all the 13 year olds at Pamela City, Arkansas. Well, no, no, I don't think so. Six people, they're not even necessarily 13 year olds. And there's only six of them, and there's thousands of 13 year olds in Pamela City, Arkansas, so we'd be safer with a, a bigger population or a bigger sample. And we're, we're surveying people at a mall. I, I would, does everybody go to the mall? Well, no, if you live 10 miles from the mall, you probably didn't go as often as someone that lives near the mall. So that might not be a very good sample. Let's try another one. How about option number two? We asked 40 boys that we found at a baseball game what their favorite participation sport was. Is that a good sample? Yeah, well, we got 40 boys. That's better than six people. But it's only boys. Would they necessarily reflect the attitude of the girls in uh, P Pamela City, Arkansas? Not necessarily. And we found them at a baseball game. I mean, if they're at a baseball game, the chances are pretty good that baseball is one of their favorite participation sports. So I'm not sure that 40 boys surveyed at a baseball game would be a good sample. How about this one? 100 students at Pamela City Middle School Cafeteria. Well now we're getting somewhere. We've got a hundred students. That's a pretty good sized population. And we're at the middle school, so they're all going to be about the right age. And we're at the cafeteria and everybody eats, so we haven't biased it by like we did with the baseball game. Yeah, let's go with that. A hundred students at Pamela City Middle School Cafeteria. So we asked these 100 students, and here's the responses we got. Nine of them preferred tennis, four of them preferred racquetball, 18 preferred basketball, and so forth. Well, that's a frequency. That's a count. It might be better if I turn those into percentages, because it's really going to be easier to compare them if we compare them as percentages or parts of 100. Now it's easy to convert these to percentages because we only surveyed we surveyed exactly 100 kids, 
So the percentages are 9%, 4%, 18%, and so forth. Now it might be even better if we put these in order from smallest to largest because it helps us understand stuff if we can see real easily and quickly what the smallest was and what the largest was. So I've done that here. Well now we're going to create our pie chart or our circle graph. How are we going to do that? Well let's think about it. A compass has 360 degrees. If you start at north and move all the way around to east, you've gone 90 degrees. You've gone one quarter of the way around the, uh, the compass. One quarter of 360 degrees, 25% of 360 degrees is 90 degrees. So, if I shaded in that quarter it would look like 25% of the entire circle was shaded in, and it would be. Well, how about 50%? What if 50% was the number I wanted to show? 50% of 360 degrees is 180 degrees. So I could shade in 180 degrees, and it would show that half of my circle was shaded in. And that communicates pretty well. Okay, well now let's create a pie chart from our actual data. My survey said that 5% of my sample liked fishing the best. And, and the implication is, if I pick the fair sample, then not only 5% of my sample likes fishing the best, but 5% of my population, all the 13-year-old kids, like fishing the best. So, I know that fishing is the favorite of 5% of my population. Now, I need to figure out what 5% of 360 degrees is. So I just multiply 0 0.05 times 360 degrees, and I get 18 degrees. Now, I'm going to have to plot that 18 degrees on my compass. And there's 360 degrees all the way around this compass, and I want to go 5% of that, or 18 degrees around. And there's 23 degrees, so it's not that far. It's going to be somewhere around there. Now, I'm going to need a protractor to do this. And you know how to use a protractor, I hope. And if I laid that protractor up there, it would tell me that right about there was 18 degrees. And so I color in a slice of pie that went from zero degrees down to the center, down to the origin, the middle, where it's a point. And I take the other end of that pie slice to 18 degrees. Now, I know that tennis represented 9% of my population. For 9% of the population, it was the uh, favorite participation sport. I got to figure out what 9% of 360 degrees is, and that's 32.4 degrees. Now that's 32.4 degrees starting from where I left off at 18 degrees. So I've got to take this around another 32.4 degrees, and I'd use my protractor to do that, and it'd come to right about there. And then I'd build another slice of pie right uh, next to the first one, and it'd look like that. And then I do that for all the rest of the values in my table. And when I did that, I get a pie chart that looks like this. Now there's a couple of things I want you to notice. First of all, I've labeled the pie chart. I put a label up here that says this is a pie chart describing the favorite participation sport of 13 year olds in Pamela City, Arkansas. And I do that because I want somebody to look at this pie chart even if they don't see the table. I want them to look at this pie chart and understand what I'm saying. I did a couple of other things that I think you'll want to do on your pie charts as well. I labeled each of the pie slices. That salmon colored slice I've labeled as soccer. And I've labeled the blue slice over here as softball. That way you can look at this salmon colored slice and say this 
represents the portion of the population that preferred soccer. And sometimes you'll see an index, usually over here on the, on the right-hand side, that'll have a color-coded key. And they'll have a little box there, and it'll be painted uh, salmon-colored, and then it'll say soccer over here. And it'll do the same for softball and basketball and so forth. But I like it better, if you've got the room on your pie chart, to just label each slice. And then I've added the percentages, and, and I think this is important too, because when I look at soccer, I can see that that's not quite a quarter of the pie. It's a little bit less than a quarter of the pie, but if I didn't have that percentage in there, I couldn't say much more than it was just a little bit less than a quarter of the total pie. But if I put the percentage in, then someone looking at this pie chart can see that soccer was the favored sport of 23% of the 13-year-olds in, in Pamela City, Arkansas. You try this one. Notice I've got three questions on here, and I'm asking you to see if you can understand what this pie chart is really telling us. Answer these questions. Hit your pause button. Answer the questions. And then hit your forward key to move on to the answer. Okay, I've got a pie chart that shows favorite vegetables. And we're going to see if you can understand it. Now you'll notice I labeled my pie chart favorite vegetables. Was that a good label? Well, I'm not sure. I don't think it's really as good of a label as I'd like. Because you might look at that and say, is that favorite vegetables of, of whom? Of dogs? Of left-handed people? Now, if it doesn't say anything, you can probably assume it's the favorite vegetable of all people, but it would be better if we had a label that was less ambiguous. Now, what are my questions? Well, my first question was, which vegetable was most popular? And that's usually easy to see on a pie chart. The biggest slice is the section with the greatest percentage. So, peppers is my biggest slice and the most popular vegetable as a result of this survey. Secondly, compare the popularity of peppers and broccoli. Well, it looks to me like broccoli, that slice is only about 25% of the slice for peppers. So I think it's some, something around 25%, maybe a little bit less than 25%. So I could say that broccoli is about one quarter as popular as peppers. The last question. The survey includes 100 shoppers. About how many liked spinach best? Well, I look at my spinach slice, and it looks to me like it's about 25%. It goes about a quarter of the way around the whole pie. It, it's a little bit less than 25%, I think. So I'm going to say it's, uh, it's about 24%. 24% of my sample liked spinach the best. Now, if there were 100 shoppers in my sample, that would mean that 24% of 100, or 24 shoppers, preferred spinach. You wanted to know how many music downloads teens, teens typically owned. You surveyed thousands of kids at middle schools throughout the country and gathered the data in this table. Was your sample well chosen? Well, you remember a sample is supposed to be large enough that you eliminate the risk that you're just picking a few oddballs. And it needs to be an effort to, uh, to be a cross-section of your total population. Well, your total population here is all teens. So you need to find a sample that's going to be teens, and it's not going to be any particular type of teen, but pretty much every type of teen. And, a teen. and I think this is a pretty good sample. We've got thousands of kids. We're surveying at middle schools 
which are uh, typically uh, uh, you're going to find a cross section of kids there. And we've gone all the way around the country to ca- gather this data. We didn't just look at kids in San Francisco and not kids in Cleveland because it could be that kids on the West Coast have more or less music downloads than kids uh, in, on the East Coast. So we've got we don't have any locational bias. We've got a pretty good cross section. So I think we picked a good sample. And it should represent the population as a whole. Now, if we're going to draw a circle graph, we have to fit these percentages onto the circle. And when we do that, it looks a lot like this. And I hope yours looks like this. I hope that your pie slices are about the same size as the ones I've drawn there. And I hope that you've labeled your pie chart so that someone can look at it and tell right away what you're trying to tell them. And then I hope you labeled or you created a legend so that they know what each of these pie slices represents. This is 0 to 50 downloads in that section right there. And then it would also be helpful if you identified the percentage that each of these pie slices represents. Well, that's our lesson on circle graphs and pie charts. I hope you learned a lot. Now it's time to test your knowledge. Go to www.mastermath.info and download the worksheet on circle graphs. Then go back to Master Math and try the quiz on circle graphs. And be sure you come back to Master Math again real soon.